So as Aeneas and Sybil continue through the underworld, he sees or he hears the description of more of the punishments of those who are tortured for having committed some of the most heinous crimes in life from the Sybil. So we start here and the Sybil tells us of the twin Ioli. So these are uh, giants who had attempted to overthrow Jupiter from Olympus. So here the ad Gressi is what's important to see. Having attempted to raise Kindera, the Magnum Caelum, with their hands and to detrudera Yahweh. So Jupiter here is the direct object and having tried, having attempted to tear down or thrust down Jove from his upper kingdoms. That's what they did. That's why they are being punished. And then we go on to read about the story of Salmonius. Salmonius, who had been the king of a region called Elis in Greece. This is in the northwestern part of the Peloponnese of Greece. He had tried to imitate the Flamas Iois and the Asonitus Olympi. Tried to imitate the fires of Jupiter and the sounds of Olympus. So here's how he did it. He did it by riding around on a four-horse chariot, croissants shaking a lampada, as if a lightning bolt instead, pergrium through the people of Greece, Pergrium Populos, and through the middle of the city of Elis is the best way to interpret this. Okay, and through the city of the middle of Elis, this region here, in fact, in Greece, is both a city and a region. So, um, rightly for a Western reader of this, there's a little bit of ambiguity, understandably so. So, as he was going about praying and even worse, demanding for himself dium honorem, daymates, for only a daymates person would do something like this, who the nimbos and the non imitabile fulmen, okay, so the clouds and the not imitatable lightning, he simularet with bronze and with the pulsu of the cornipedum equorum. That's how Salmonius attempted to reproduce those sounds. But Jupiter would have none of that. Pater omnipotens. He hurls down a talum non faces and not with fumea lumina from torches. Uh-uh. But he casts Salmonius down very purposefully with a thunderbolt and with a whirlwind, with a, a, a wind that drives him to the deepest part of the underworld. So this is what happens if you try inappropriately to mock the power of the gods. Let's see if there are more examples of this coming. And then there is Titius. And if, as you read this, you think this sounds rather familiar to another Titan uh, punished by uh, Jupiter or Zeus for giving fire to man, you would be correct. So our next torture is that of Titius. He is a giant, a child of Earth. And your notes help you hear that neknon here should be interpreted as likewise. And erat here has the forcefulness of it was possible. So likewise, it was possible to see, to discern Titius. How much real estate does he take up? Noem yugera. Tota noem yugera whose body is stretched through nine acres. And then what you see following here is absolutely accurate. A tour with an obunco rostro. Imanis tour. 
a lovely chiasmus right there. And upon the immortali yekur he tondains. Tondains. He's eating. He's eating it. And ripe or rich here, fruitful with punishments, he feasts upon the entrails. So the entrails that are rich with punishments, he is feasting. He tears open for a feast. Epulis here is a dative of purpose. So this huge eternal vulture has perpetual food for himself, and he lives right beneath the tall chest of this giant. Nor is any rest ever given to the renewing guts, or for Fibris entrails. Wow. So you must annoy the gods pretty thoroughly and convincingly for that sort of a punishment. The next group that you hear about is this group who are very famous in mythology called the Lapiths and the Lapith kings. Ixion and Perithuis are two of several kings of the Lapiths. They are believed to be from northern Greece and very, very good with horses, raising horses, and being in a horse-like culture. Most famously, the Lapiths are uh, known in association with the centaurs in that there was a wedding banquet for Perithuis. At this banquet, the centaurs were invited to come as a sign of hospitality. However, the centaurs had never yet before experienced wine. So what happens is their animal senses are heightened with the intoxicating effects of the wine, and the centaurs begin to go after every woman in the area, and it turns into a tremendous debacle and fight. And this battle between the Lapiths and the centaurs comes to be known as the Centauromachy. And so it's this group that is referred to simply by saying the Lapiths. It's a famous mythological piece in art. The Italian Renaissance artist Piero di Cosimo painted. This is one frame of a very large piece called the Battaglia fra i Centauri e Lapiti. So a very famous piece in mythology. Okay, back to our text. So above these guys hangs an atra silix. Now, now it's lapsura, and it hangs over them, similar to an object falling. Lucent genialibus altis toris. So what, hap what you have here then are the golden knobs of the dining couches. And remember, this is a story associated around a wedding feast. And so just as in life here in the underworld and in Tartarus, they are pictured there. So those knobs shine from the genialibus altis stories and there are prepared epulae, feasts, in front of their faces. Regificoluxu. These are Lapid kings. So as they sit in this banqueting environment, the eldest of the Furies reclines next to them. Yuxta akubat. Et prohibut. Prohibet. Contingramensas. She prevents them from touching the tables with their hands. So they are served at a banquet perpetually in the underworld. And because of the violation the centaurs and the lapiths here showed upon each other was a violation of the host guest relationship and understanding in the ancient world. And so you can see that imbalance still playing out here in the underworld. Okay, 
the next passage gives us more of a general description of those who just are in the underworld. The line starting here with heek is quite challenging, and as your book rightly suggests, you should try to interpret this these two lines with the following omissions inserted. So let's take a look at it with this assistance and see if this proves to be useful. So here are those to whom, so for this relative clause, the implied AE is your antecedent, are those to whom brothers were hateful. So you should love your brother is the implicit message here. And those by whom, again, quibus is the relative pronoun with the antecedent AE, ablative now with the a, a quibus, by whom a parent had been struck. So for heaven's sakes, don't abuse or hurt your parents or strike them down. Or those by whom, and then for here, imply another iteration of the a quibus, a deceit had been contrived. That's going to be the best way to navigate your way through those two lines with all of the other uh, syntax omitted and the, the smaller words omitted. So we'll come back here in the larger context then and carry on. Or, in addition to those who hated their brothers and their families and affixed crimes and deceits to others, uh, you have those who alone with riches found, they gloat over or they keep them. Nor, and this is pasu eira, the eira and alternative ending, nor do they place part of these riches to their own, meaning their family. And the Sybil adds quite nicely here, this is the largest group in the underworld. The selfishness, the lack of sharing, is not to be rewarded in the afterlife. And then there are those who were killed on account of adultery, and those who, and in this passage that I underlined, I wonder if you have any idea who indeed this might be in reference to. Who are those that would have followed impia? Arma, especially as you reflect upon your knowledge of the content and the history of our work with Caesar. Or those who had uh, or those who had not feared to deceive the trust, the right hands of their masters. All of those expect their punishment inclusive. Included, included there. And then the Sibyl says directly to Aeneas, Ne quaira, do not ask to be taught. Do not seek to be taught quam poinam, what punishment, or what form, or fortune, mercit the weiros, buries all of these men. Then she gives you a brief overview of all the punishments which are being exacted in balance with the crimes committed. So she says, some turn a huge rock. This is obviously an allusion to the story of Sisyphus rolling the rock up the hill. Others, she says, hang, having been stretched out by the spokes of a wheel. This refers back directly to Ixion, the king of the Lapiths mentioned above, for that was specifically his punishment. And here sits sad Theseus, unluckily. Theseus, too, was best friends with Perithous, the other mentioned Lapith king above. And so, again, you have them eternally sitting, having violated host and guest relationships in the mythological tradition and 
most miserable phlegias. They advise everyone walk who comes near, omnis for omnes, and they testify with a great voice through the shadows. And here is their advice right here. Learn justice. Now warned. And do not reject the gods. So show due respect to the gods. All of those in this part of the underworld are clearly demonstrating what happens when you don't. Beyond them, the Sybil concludes with another list of crimes among the living. This guy here sold his country for Auro. Or betrayed his country, as the case may be, how you choose to interpret that. Okay. And this one, Imposuit Dominum Potentem. And we can interpret that perhaps placed himself upon a powerful master. In the ancient world, your laws are always inscribed on bronze tablets and hung in a very public place. The next bit is in reference to that. So this guy here, again, for a price, he fixed the laws, or, or and, he refixed them, as the case may be. So he fastens and unfastens them from their places in public as the bribes are exchanged and the laws change accordingly. This criminal here entered the bedroom chamber, the wedding chamber of his daughter, and he invaded the marriage rights reserved for her. So this is a portrayal of incest in the ancient world. And this is a powerful statement too. All having dared, or all dared, an imanenephos, just an unspeakable crime or sin. And the potiti here is the verb to obtain, and it takes the ablative, and they all gained that which was dared. The Sibyl concludes here, and she says, not if I had kentum linguae, or kentum ora, or a wox frea, would she be able to name all of the crimes and punishments within this.